Amar suspension. The real is back. What up? Come on in here, man. Dribble with me. Pillmatic in stores now. All streaming platforms. Put an album out for y'all. Fire. Put three videos out for y'all to go with the album so far. Doing this shit right. I'm feeling like I'm feeling like Marion Knight these days. I'm just keeping it real. Good morning. I said good morning. Good afternoon. I know I ain't seen y'all in a minute. That um that brief hiatus that we just went through, I wasn't on for eight days. That's the longest I've been off of YouTube um, in some years, probably 10 years. They had me suspended for some shit I had nothing to do with. I posted a video of J.R. Smith fucking some dude up um, during the George Floyd, riot, George Floyd riot. Somebody hit his car and shit. I cover hip-hop sports and fashion, man. I was with, working within the uh, the realm of being the dribble and shit, covering some NBA shit. And... Uh, they booked me, no questions asked. If you got some old content on your channel that probably depicts some violence or some shit like that, you might as well just go on and put it on private right now to just save yourself some hassle and shit. If you put it on private, you'll be able to keep the views that you, um, you know, that you tallied thus far. You'll be able to keep all of them. Um, that's that's really the only way. It, deleting it don't make no sense. That That's counterproductive, but anyway. Um, Pillmatic in stores on all streaming sites. I dropped a new episode out um, on the podcast. I feel like I'm at a disadvantage. I ain't been here with y'all in a week, man. Um, while I was away, I've been I've been tuning in to the internet. I'm still you know I'm still tuned in and shit. Ain't nothing happened. Y'all ain't did nothing. Ain't nothing extraordinary happened. Ain't nothing happened. Ain't nothing changed. Ain't nothing new. Online, period. I'm, I'm paying, I'm peeping it. I'm paying attention. Y'all don't have nothing if I'm not here, man. Y'all don't, y'all just don't. I was going a week. Y'all didn't have nothing but Charleston White. That's all y'all got right now. What else y'all got going on in media? Charleston White, the Charleston White show. Aside from that, cause ain't nobody working. Ain't nobody working. Shout out to Zip with the Drip. Um, that video by uh, Westside Gun and uh, Black Star. Most Def is prolific, yo. Whenever you get a chance to hear see Most Def, it's like seeing a shooting star and shit, man. It's, it's always prolific. Nigga rap his ass off. Deliver delivery is incredible, and the song is dope as a motherfucker. Um, I just had to put that out there because we. On my Instagram page all week, we've been on fashion time. And that that's kind of what brought me to this this live stream right now. A lot of people be wearing fat, uh, some bullshit associated with this hip-hop culture and community and shit like that. If you step into the, the cypher with some bullshit on, I went through this before, motherfucker gonna critique you. That's just the bottom line. That's just the bottom line. This shit is hip hop. This shit has always been cool. So you gotta dress cool. That's one of the requirements. If you can't do that and shit, you're gonna be ostracized. And while we're here, let's talk about uh, the act of trying to pay one's way into the entertainment business. Let's talk about that. I've seen this attempt several times. Throughout my career, every now and then somebody would just appear with some settlement money, some money they got from a car accident, uh, with some money that they got from somebody might have passed away. An influx of capital arrives, and um, some people feel that they can just pay their way into the spotlight. I've seen it happen before. I um, I seen there was an artist many years ago. He used to be on a DVD circuit. His name was the President. He was like close to Murder Mook or something like that. 
I met him in Miami before. I met I met him in person. His name was Norm. He was a cool nigga. Rocked the Louis loafers and shit. Keep keep nice bank rolls on him and shit like that. But I remember when he came out, he was doing a lot of World Star activity. He was always on World Star, and World Star, of course, was a pay pay to play platform. He was always on World Star, either rapping, passing out turkeys and toys, or doing something. And um, the whole time that he was doing it, I just knew that he wasn't going to make it as a rapper. Brian Peters Patterson, what's up? I knew he wasn't going to make it as a rapper. It um, it was nothing against him per se. He just wasn't, he didn't have no dynamic, outstanding qualities that would help him become a rapper, be a rapper and shit. Like he, uh, the music wasn't, a, wasn't really about nothing all like that. And gradually he went on to... Uh, a different, a different realm of the hip hop business. He is exotic pop now to this day. He's he's, he's exotic pop. He's a part of that uh, business venture coming out, I believe, Texas or yeah, I believe it's Texas, possibly Houston, where uh, they got a a beverage black owned beverage company. They got a black owned beverage beverage company and he put his putting his resources and his fun, funds behind that. He stepped away from the whole um the whole music thing. You feel me? He said, who y'all talking about? I haven't put a name on it just yet. I am shortly. I am. I had an encounter with a guy a few days ago on Instagram. Make sure you follow me on IG at I am Gully TV underscore. I had an encounter with a guy on Instagram the other day. And um, <laughs> I had an encounter with a cat on Instagram and it it originated, it, it started out as um, Zip with the drip, one of the talented MCs on my um on my album Pillmatic. He does his media thing too. Zip with the drip went to prison in the early nineties, early to mid nineties when New York City was beef and broccoli, New York City and shit. You feel me? So that's who he is. Like he's back out here in society. He he's been home a few years and shit, but that's who he is. He in that energy, that that realm and shit. So um, when you, when you see him put out a video and he's critiquing something that somebody's wearing, that's because he is a New York City traditionalist as far as, far as the hip hop and the, the, the dressing aspect, the, the fashion aspect. He's a traditionalist and shit. He, he posted a video, um, of his brother's name's Five Mikes. He, he a rapper, I guess, on the rise coming out of... The Bronx and my man Zip said he looked like he was wearing. You know, he said he looked like one of the neon gummies. I thought it was funny as hell because I had just posted the same picture of the same guy in the same outfit, probably like four or five, five, probably like five months ago. It 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 made some waves when I posted it and shit. People said things about it, but it kind of like it kind of like went away and shit when I posted it. Um, for some reason, I could tell certain people didn't want to say, yo, this cat is corny. People didn't want to say it. They, they, People didn't want to say it. I just, I noticed that people didn't want to say it. And I'm like, damn, what's up with this and shit? Like, why they giving him a pass and shit? Anyway, months and months go by, zip with the drip, see the video, see the pictures or whatever. He make a video saying that my man was dressed like the, uh, he said five from B BK. Okay, pardon me. Um, said the homeboy was dressed like the neon gummies and shit. People be instigating, they didn't tag him to my page, whatever. All I did was reposted a video that someone else put out. Zip put out the video. I just reposted it. And he get on my page talking about some, he a legend, he gonna slap this, and da 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 And uh, I'm like, well, damn, you a legend? For real? I've been in this shit since 2004. I'm like, where did the fuck did you come from? <laughs> where did you come from? I'm like, where the fuck did you come from? Like, how is you 
He said, Gully, YouTube definitely not rocking with you. They gave absolutely no notification. I'm going to be all right. Make sure you share it. Share it. So I'm like, damn. He said he was a legend. I interview legends. I've interviewed quite a few of them. That's one right there. God sham God. Right? I interview legends. I wasn't aware of his legendary status. So I asked around. And don't nobody got nothing to support his legendary claim. <laughs> <laughs> and no, can't nobody support his legendary claim. But uh, this get back to my original point. You can't pay your way in music, fam. If it ain't no good, we're going to know. We're going to know. And I'm damn sure going to know because I'm behind a camera. He said, didn't you interview Ray for all and skip to my loop? Yeah, these guys are legends. These guys have legendary reputations. They've done legendary feats. Uh, Skip to my loop, played street ball, played college, and played in the NBA. That's legendary. God, sham God, got his own move that he perfected, and he played in the NCAA tournament. He also played for the Washington Wizards and shit. You feel me? Um, this cat just appeared out of nowhere, and I'm like, fam, just because you do a song with everybody that's popping at the time, just because you run around the room and do a song with everybody that's popular, don't mean that you a fucking legend and shit. You know what I'm saying? You're doing you the the people that you doing songs with, a lot of the niggas that you doing music with, they put in real work in this music business. But they ain't even legends yet. They not even claim a legends. My resume is like that. I wouldn't claim I wouldn't claim legendary. Not yet. I still got the boogie. You feel me? But um this can't work. It can't work. It can't work. It don't matter where you from. It don't matter how much money you got. If you can't rap, if you can't rap, I'm going to say it again. If you can't rap, it ain't, it's, it's a rap. If you can't rap, it's a rap. It ain't going to work. Um, shout out to Pee Wee. I see you in there working, baby. Make sure y'all go to the website. I got my own CMOS gummies. I got CMOS too. I ain't put it on the site yet. So, Allie, Kendio, what up? Make sure, look at them big portions. Make sure y'all go get, get you some and shit. We got passion fruit, ginger, orange, soursop, spirulina, pineapple. Go get right. Go get right. Then, you know I got my basket of tricks. I got my basket of tricks, PA knit. Go to the website, get right. Go to the website, get your dribble right. You feel me? www. This is called the Superman Lover right here. W, you see that? PA Knit, that's me. www. PA Knit, these ain't on the website. So make sure you follow me on Instagram at I am Gully TV underscore. I appreciate all of y'all. He said Bernard paid his way to the spotlight. Now he's on the Forbes list. Burner didn't pay his way into the spotlight. Burner sold reefer. <laughs> That's the difference. He didn't pay his way to the spotlight. He sold reefer and did music the whole time and shit. I think his situation is a little different. He didn't make it as a rapper. He made it as, as cookies, the reefer man and shit. <laughs> That's what happened with him. So out, Judge Red, what's up? Callie, what's good? When is the Shaheem documentary dropping? Great question. Now that I can breathe a little bit, now that I can breathe a little bit, I can get back to working on it and shit. We had to do the Pillmatic thing. I gave you a Shaheem music video. The video, the music video, you might hear something about it during the documentary and shit, but we doing this shit in an orderly fashion and everything is going wonderful. I'm glad to have you here. I'm glad that y'all been here to experience um, the metamorphosis, me going through my caterpillar, the butterfly stage and shit like that. Y'all been here the whole time. Continue to stay here. I'm going to give y'all hip-hop, sports, and fashion. 
Tom Giss was tough. He said, yes, he will be on Pillmatic too. That's my man. Tom Giss is my man. I'm going to tell you why. He said, how about them Pacers? Fuck the Pacers. The Pacers ain't no good. That nigga that was talking shit to LeBron, he ain't like that. He had a good game. LeBron wasn't playing no defense. Fuck the Pacers. I woke up to that goddamn loss. I had fell asleep. And woke up and a nigga hit a fucking buzzer beater in my face. <laughs> ah, shit. <laughs> I wish I didn't fucking roll over and see that shit. I wish I would have heard about it on the news the next day. I could have stomached that a little bit better. That shit was traumatic, man. I rolled up out my sleep. Bang! I'm like, oh, shit. This little nigga bouncing around like he a killer and shit. Looking at LeBron, nigga. Yeah. Like, damn. I couldn't stomach that. That was bad. Shout out to the Lakers, man. We got busy. Shout out to Russell Westbrook. I'm going to move Russ Jersey back over this way into the spotlight. Because Russ is that nigga. Y'all turned y'all back on Russell Westbrook. Y'all was saying trade him. We just played Indiana. Buddy Hill and Miles Turner ain't better than no fucking Russell Westbrook. I don't even know how Buddy Hill's name even got put in the Westbrook trade. Okay, nigga, you hit some threes and shit. You got a little jumper. That's some surface value shit. That don't always show up. We just released Matt Ryan this morning. He had a buzzer beater for the win. Cut him loose. You got to know how to play ball, man. Russ is that nigga. He said Russ was gar garbage last year. We not talking about last year. We're not talking about last year, man. Y'all can't hold people to their low point and shit. Like, when a motherfucker start escalating, you got to give them props. Ben, ben Simmons been balling. Ben Simmons been balling. He get props. He been balling. People need to say that loud. As loud as everybody did with the slander and was saying all of the evil things, making memes and shit, people should say. Ben, ben Simmons getting busy. Getting back to Tom Giss. Tom Giss um, approaching the hip-hop game from a similar angle as me and shit. He's a former basketball player, too. He's a former basketball player. He's from Harlem and shit. Y'all been listening to him, you know? Dipset Work, Mixtape Circuit, the Upstage album with J.R. Ryder, 40 Cal, Hell Rail, and A Mafia. But this is his story and shit, you know what I'm saying? Um, I believe, shout out to Giz, I believe I inspired this in a way. Because once me and Giz met, we, we met as, you know, he's a rapper on Gully TV. And then we got to talking. And damn, homie, me and you just alike. He a ball player just like me. Play point, got the pictures, got the newspaper articles, got the history and shit. I said, my nigga, we got to start rocking that. That's thorough. That's thorough. That's sexy. That's attractive. That's the glow. Nigga, you used to play basketball? You was a point? Man, you need to say that shit louder, my nigga. Straight up, that go for everybody in here, man. The basketball niggas, man, use a special being, man. You know what I mean? You win championships with five people, just five. You and four other personalities and shit, man. You know what I mean? This is not football where you got 11 niggas. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> you and your four teammates, man. It's a lot more of a, a intimate situation and shit. So shout out to, it's called Gun Ho. The greatest you never heard of and shit. Make sure y'all get a copy and shit. So um, probably Amazon and all them sites. If not, Tom Gissy on Instagram and shit. Shout out to everybody that played ball. He said, Giss has that back-to-back -back flow. Harlem rappers do that. A lot of alterations making the same words rhyme, but it has to be fly. Thank you. He said, yeah, that's us. Ball players. Shout out to the ball players. My son played point in Portugal. Get your son some dribble guy shorts, man. Tell him that we support him. And we over here loving what it is they do. Send me some footage or something. I'm on Instagram. You know what I mean? Your baby got a highlight tape. Send it to the dribble. Let me check him out. Kai and Omi got sued for the fake Jordan ones they selling. Oh, they finally booked them. Everybody that came out with sneakers took that silhouette, took that same style, and just 
But they booked him. They mad at that boy Cool Kai because he making money and shit. He making some fire. He putting out some fire. His shit is going to sell regardless because he putting out some flavor. So they can just be mad at him. That's what it is. Pee Wee, thank you. Booking Pee Wee, get him out of here. Good afternoon to everybody. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. Go watch the latest video from Pillmatic. That's three out right now. Uh, it's called Fast Break by Big U, Trenton, New Jersey. Shout out to Big U, Trenton in the building. Go check that out. Like, share, comment. That's three videos. Y'all favorite rapper don't be giving y'all three videos off of album. I ain't even done. I ain't even done. He said, Master P did it. Master P got him some money and tried to buy his way in the game. Just like I said this other day. <laughs> Master P got him some money. said, man, I want to play for the Hornets. I want to play for the fucking Toronto Raptors. P, P, P gave it a shot. A legit, they gave P a legitimate shot, too. They did. P was knocking the jumper down. Pillmatic is fire, big bro. Thank you, thank you. Make sure that you go get that, man. Share it with your friends. What do you think about what LeBron said about these damn reporters? Somebody said LeBron threw Kyrie under the bus. They said uh, LeBron threw Kyrie under the bus and he realized what he did, and now he's turned his focus to Jerry Jones. He's telling the media why y'all ain't saying nothing about Jerry Jones. <laughs> he trying to make it right. The album is dope. Played the whole thing two times in a row. Thank you. Y'all like the videos. 300 people here this afternoon. I appreciate every one of y'all. I was off live stream for eight days. I couldn't even upload or nothing. Go look at my uploads eight days ago before my shit got back active. They suspended me for no reason. They could have gave me a, um, they could have age restricted the video. Pillmatic gives off AZ vibes. Thank you. It was supposed to. It's supposed to be pretty. It's supposed to be fly, elegant. Where <clears throat> my nephew is a 14-year-old point guard getting ready to get busy in high school. Let me give you some little some game for you. You got a 14-year-old. That means his body's his body is still growing. I'm gonna give you a tip right now that he'll be more dynamic than the guys that he's playing against. Take your 14-year-old and start working on his legs. Have him doing jump rope, skip rope. That activate the quick quick twitch muscles in your leg and shit. How you bouncing all over the place. Have him fucking with his legs. Have him squatting. Basketball players don't like to squat. You put some running back legs on a point guard. What do you have? Baron Davis. Straight up. Nas flow is garbage on that track with 21 Savage. I don't like it. I don't think he should have did I don't think he should have did it. They did it to, I don't know, bridge the gap between the generations. We need a Raekwon song. Let's go. We've talked about this, man. He, 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 we, need a, we need a Raekwon song. He does a song with everybody except for Chef. We need that. Chef. We need that. He said the mic and drill, jump rope, and pull-ups. 21 Savage wasn't even rhyming right. Nas took that money and bounced. I don't know if BG is home. Y'all keep saying that. He needs to play at a high school with a strong strength of schedule. Them small schools ain't going to cut it unless he's a blue chipper. It's almost like the high school shit don't even matter. I mean, you can be cool with your high school team, but the, what matters is the AAU squad that he running with, who he playing with in the summertime and shit like that. Like, scouts probably can't make it to your high school game, but... They can make it to them big tournaments in Vegas when you playing on, on them AAU squads. So that's what's important and shit. Like, they got some shit in school called reclass now. Niggas be flunking on purpose just to play again. Like, niggas be like 20 years old in high school and shit. You like, what the fuck? 
How did that happen? Like, that used to not even be possible. He said he got to play AAU. Baldini, I'm giving him the, I'm giving him the path. BG is not in prison. He may not be home, but he is not in prison anymore. Yeah, under, under no circumstance. You got to work your way in. Even AAU shit. You still got to get on the court and put in work. He said the Easter Invitational. He said, gully with the content strategy. I'm just sticking to what I gave y'all. I've always given y'all hip-hop, sports, and fashion. He said, yeah, that reclass is big here in Georgia, and it's corny. Pass poor squad. Make sure y'all get one. Who's the worst rapper ever? I don't talk about the worst rappers here. They don't even make the they don't even make the cut. He said, I played point guard, high school, the Marines, and prison. Salute to the point. I put in work every day with my dribble or part of the lifestyle. That's what's up. You should interview Pete Nice. I would love to. Let's talk about that for a minute. Who would have known the third base broke up because of a female, man? Third base should have stuck together for this for this sole reason. They was the they wasn't the first. They was the second rap group to be totally embraced by hip hop music by black folks and shit. Uh, Beastie Boys was if you were there when they popped off, you would you accepted the Beastie Boys. The Beastie Boys had some good music and shit like that. But third base was on another level. These motherfuckers didn't just have good music. They had black haircuts, dressing. Dancing like niggas and everything. <laughs> they fell out over a chick. Uh, according to Math Office expert opinion, Search says that him and Pete Nice fell out because he called... Pete Nice called Search's wife a bitch. Pete, Pete Nice says he don't remember calling her a bitch, but says that she is the fucking problem. Uh, because she should have never been around. He kept bringing her on tour and shit like that. Also, Search's girlfriend told her she can't deal with him if he's MC Search. He has to be Michael, so you have a female telling him to stand down from his lifelong dream of being an MC. For you know, he said, Beastie Boys is more rock. Rock alternatives. That, I, I, yeah, you're right. I don't think the Beastie Boys was trying to be hip-hop they was rapping on rock tracks they had some you know some hip-hop production in there somewhere and shit he said third base was dope production was dope the reason cube came to the east coast i heard that yesterday i heard cube originally came to the east coast to work with a guy associated with third base and for whatever reason he wasn't available and he ended up working with um the shock leads from the bomb squad and shit yeah He said the, the Beastie Boys was originally a punk rock group. My man said, I thought the Beastie Boys was whack when I was young. They had songs you could vibe to. They did. They had some. Philadelphia, what's up? I seen a video of uh, Loon. Loon is, he on his dean heavy. He going hard with the Islam. He feeding a lot of people, um, doing a lot of charitable acts. Zakat in the community. He said that he's down working in Philadelphia right now. According to Loon, Philadelphia is the murder capital of the United States right now. Why these young rappers today don't wear vests like the older dudes did? What type of verse you talking about? He said, I thought they was black until I seen the gas face video. There's video footage of the Beastie Boys doing punk rock in like 1982. Loon is down there um, doing some humanitarian work and he's saying how he can't believe, I, I got to say this first, Loon, don't get clapped down there, man. Don't get clapped down there, man, with that Dean, standing with that Dean like that. What I mean by this is, 
slugs fly undiscriminately in Philadelphia. The shooter normally be a nigga named Hanif, Ahmed, Kareem, Abdul, uh, Anwar, Shamsuddin, anyway, the victim and the shooter. It's always been like that. Um, they always set it off. Philly been setting it off around the Juma. You can get bodied in there and outside of there. It ain't no that if you, I hope you don't think that the Dean uh it's not what you think in Philly, fam. It's not what you think. And there's some real devout Muslims down there, but they grew up in that shit, man. And it supersedes the block thing, the block thing, the hood thing, the I'm from Norris Street, I'm from J Street, I'm from Tasker, you know what I'm saying? I'm from Market, I'm from Erie Avenue and shit. That supersedes the Dean. That's That comes before the Dean, I'm just telling you and shit. Um, he said the Dean don't save you. No, not at all, not there. Not there. He was saying he was alarmed by the stories of people getting killed at the masjid and outside the masjid and all that. I'm like, they've been setting it off at Juma forever. For real. They set it off. They set it off in Juma in jail and shit. I've seen it with my own eyes. Straight up, like volatile. Def Jam had a chance to sign Madonna first, and they didn't, but imagine if they did. She was in the era where music would have sold. It was the MTV era. He said, sad, but you stay in fact. She said, a few who killed Malcolm X, according to research, the, uh, the trigger man behind that was from Newark. But if it was some Philly, Philly niggas down with it, I wouldn't be surprised. The Philadelphia Black Mob, they was a part of the Nation of Islam. They was fruiting everything. Straight up. They don't fuck around. <laughs> that was young nigga got clapped outside of Germantown, Masjid. It was crazy. <clears throat> Kareem, it been like that in Philly, man. You got to pick your poison, man. Pick where you going to go and have your fun at and shit. They set it off everywhere, everywhere. South Street used to be, used to be, can go to South Street and be cool. That's like downtown and shit like that. No, you better go to Jersey. You better go, you better go to Jersey. Thank you. West Side Gun and Black Stars Fire. Yes, it is. Can y'all like the video? We can't even crack a hundred likes. Because you niggas is lazy. He said, nah, South Street different now, Lord. It's not the Greek Fest era. I just seen a case a case about a wild shooting on South Street and shit. He said, downtown Center City is the most dangerous place in 2022. What you think about Philly having 472 murders this year so far the murder capital U.S.? I'm not shocked because I'm from Pennsylvania. I've been around Philly boys all my life. They murder rate been up. Like, what's the difference between 400 homicides and 300? It ain't no difference and shit. It's chaos. 250 homicides. Like, I then did time with them when as a juvenile and shit. You'll be in a juvenile home with them and two or three of them niggas got bodies already. And then been in another juvenile home before, then been in a couple juvenile homes and foster homes before they got to the settlement that I met them at. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <coughs> um doing life, doing juvenile life. When they leave the juvenile system, they go on to Camp Hill. No, when they leave the juvenile system, they're gonna take them to the nearest state penitentiary. They're gonna drive you from the juvenile place where they're giving you snacks and peanut butter and jelly, they're going to drive you to the nearest penitentiary and drop you off there because you're still on time. Cousins get body cousins like it's nothing in Philly. It's strictly no BS city. They don't care who you are. 
Make sure y'all follow me on Twitter. He said, West Side Gun on his own level. That live in Liz and Lex track, that uh, Black Star joint is called Peppers, I think. It's fire. Make sure you check that out. Fire. Talib Kweli and Mos Def. Some of y'all aren't aware of the prestige of um, Black Star. Black Star came out in an era where everybody was wearing Cuban links and Avarexes and shit and driving around in foreign cars and Benzes and they came through like some black hippies, basically, and shit. They was driving a van. <laughs> they dressed like, you know, like Brooklyn and shit. The fatigues, the beef and Bronx, the hat, the military shit, no jewelry, and they was highly respected and accepted in this era of DMX, Jay-Z, Def Squad, uh, Noriega, all of that. Black Star was right in there. Straight up. Burlap39. Hit me on Instagram at I am Gully TV underscore. I be shipping them sh I be shipping a lot of shit in separate packaging and shit for a certain reason and shit. So you might get one a day, one tomorrow. Shit like that. It's coming though. Joe Keem would probably ask if you heard anybody say they going off to Philly on vacation. Never. Never. Never going to hear that. More black on black murders have been committed than soldiers killed in Vietnam since you and I was been born. So sad. Yeah, that, that sounds terrible. Good afternoon to everybody. Can y'all like the video? Y'all lazy as a motherfucking. Get Tom, get, get his book, Gun Hole. It's about basketball and hip hop. Both of them perfected in the park. Y'all didn't know that when them niggas came out to the park to start hip hop, we was already out there playing basketball and shit. You dig? Basketball and hip hop music is one and the same. Peewee, thank you. Gully, your album is fire. Check out the video. Check out the video. I got three of them. Zip with the drip. It's called Game Time Fast Break by Big O and Big Pressure. I played ball with Tom Gibson. I'm going to cop the book. Do that. Get mine, too. I'm a ball player, too. It's called some things I've been through. I talk about the dribble in there. Nutty Raider, hit me up on Instagram, man. Let's talk about that. Album was definitely fire. Still fire. It wasn't fire. It's still fire. It's going to remain fire and shit. And we're going to continue to put out videos and we're going to continue to push it because it's fire. This ain't throwaway music. This ain't that you downloaded last week and then you off listening to something else. No. No. Y'all going to be listening to Zip with the Drip, and y'all going to be listening to the coaching by Donique and, and Nora the Flood years and years from now. Thank you. I directed that video. I'm glad you liked it. Anybody need a video director? You need a shooter? Hit me up. I'm nice. Y'all seeing the work. Y'all seeing the work. Hit me up. Gully, what you think about the 10-year-old in Milwaukee that shot his mom in the head for not getting him a video game charged as an adult? I think his mother was uh, negligent and obviously careless because a 10-year-old can go and retrieve your pistol. How the fuck do he know where your gun at to where he can go get it? That don't make any goddamn sense. She endangered the whole house. He could have shot himself. Before he could have shot himself. He could have shot anybody and shit. <coughs> bad, bad move. Cost her cost her uh, her life. He gonna be scarred forever because he's in the care of some people that he don't know gonna be there for a long, long fucking time. 
and nobody wins, but she was negligent. She was negligent. No pistol lock on it. They got gun locks that you can't fire the gun and shit like that. How the fuck he go get your gun and clap you? That God damn. He said, I knew every I knew where everything was in the house when I was a kid. Negligent. I didn't find no hammers. I never found a pistol. I might have seen some bullets. I might have seen some bullets somewhere. I didn't see the motherfucking weapon. Not at no 10 years old laying around. Fuck no. Nah. He said he got that fused sea moss gummies. For y'all who don't like the taste of the sea moss gel, or some of y'all that's buying the actual sea moss and you don't know how to prepare and consume it. Here's a fruity, tasty way of consuming it. They're on my website. I got my own gummies. They call Soul Alley. I even need people to buy this in a wholesale, ad, wholesale aspect. So if you got a store, barbershop, anything like that, holla at me, man. Let's put a play together. It's like that. He said, they don't sell the gun without a lock anymore. So how did she get killed? Gun one locked up. She got the gun in the arm. Um, in a drawer somewhere. She was doing laundry. He got the gun from another part of the house and went down there and shot her. He said, I put my white homies on that sea moss. That's what's up. He said, sea moss has a disgusting taste. It actually doesn't have a taste at all. It's like really bland. So get you some Soul Alley gum Soul Alley gum Soul Alley Sea Moss gummies. And um, get your daily allowance and a fruity little snack. You could even give them to your kids. In the South, guns are everywhere and promoted, but it's about teaching kids about guns and safety use. So now he really ain't getting a, a VR. Man, he in a lot of trouble. Um, getting back to the topic of the video, you can't pay your way into hip hop. Um, it's a lot of people that be showing up trying to pull a stunt, like a lot of hustlers, niggas that's been hustlers all their life. They wake up one day and say, "Man, I want to be a rapper today." And shit, we gotta. This shit has to stop. This shit has to stop because they polluting the airways, man. It's a lot of bullshit that is uh, being passed off as hip hop, but it has no substance. Nobody is even buying it. So for niggas to, uh, to just stop it, stop it. Pillmatic available everywhere. You want real music? You want fire? I've been on this platform telling y'all about fire for 20 years. I've been pointing y'all at, at, my camera has been pointing and depicting fire for 20 years. You gotta trust my word. These niggas got busy on the album, Pillmatic that shit. Kentucky has some of the best gun laws. No registration, no license to carry, conceal, open carry. He said, that Hellcat 9 is real comfy. Love from Philly. You be safe out there in Philadelphia. They say y'all the murder capital of the world. You not gonna, niggas just locked up. You ain't gonna hear, they, you, they, you won't hear the last of that, that they the murder capital right now. Niggas is hearing that on every tier in the United States, every tier, every prison yard in the United States. That even affect the way niggas diddy bop, th the way niggas diddy bop through the system. The niggas in, in, in the system from Philadelphia, they even rocking that murder capital. Y'all know what it is. Been telling y'all about this shit. Bob, my money, thank you. He said it's treacherous. Download and stream it. It's everywhere. Music Choice, Pandora, all kind of shit. Distro Kid do the thing. Word.
Chester, what up? Tell my niggas I say what's up. Wayne, Fats, uh, Kareem Robinson, then my guys and shit. He said Kanye at it again. I don't even cover that madness, man. Until that nigga put out a song, music video, etc. Who cares what Kanye is doing? Who cares? Who cares? He said, Kareem, my cousin. That's my man. He a point guard. <laughs> him and Sweets. I was down with him and Sweets. I had to straighten them niggas out on the hoop court when I first met him, especially Kareem. <laughs> Kareem was nice. Sweets was more of a scorer, like a shooter and shit. But Reem could handle the rock and everything. He said, it's crazy down Huntington Park right now. Kanye is pandering to whoever going to listen. I believe that that's become a hustle. You ain't even got to perform no more. You don't even got to rap no more. Just get on the internet and do some theatrics and you lit. Charleston White is doing it on the regular. That's all y'all talk about. I was gone. I was off the net for eight days. I sat back and watched. Nothing else goes down that y'all talking about. That Nothing but Charleston White. <laughs> Charleston White. That's all y'all got. <laughs> Damn, it's that's what it's that's what it's come to, huh? Why don't you play the album in the background? I could play it. I'm gonna play it on here one day. I can copyright violate that shit. All of the fees from copyright. When you put somebody's music, I'm going to tell y'all something, right? If you like to rap on somebody else's beat and you put it on the internet, it gives you a copyright violation immediately, right? But the funds for every play, every stream that you get, go to the nigga who made that song or made that beat. It does. It does. So I'm like, damn, I could put my own album up here and shit. <laughs> it's going to get copyrighted, but the fee's still going to go to me and P.H. Ray, Big O, the niggas that rapped on the song and shit. That's crazy. He said, Charleston White and Wack 100 got Urban Media in a chokehold. Hmm. Interesting. Boosie is basically an internet celebrity now. Boosie got a couple of good songs out. I seen a video or something, or I heard, I heard something. He got some. He got some songs out. He got some music out. You got some music out. You can show your ass. You can. You got you you got room to show your ass if you putting out if you hitting that studio, you putting out some fire. Show your ass. <laughs> he said he going double wood though. I went to a Bo Boosie show last summer in Akron, Ohio. It was live. He has a, a fan base of people that like that shit. I was like amazed. I'm like, damn, they singing all of his songs and everything. I was totally out of the loop. But somebody like him. I told y'all this on here before. All you got to do is convince somebody to like you. That's the beginning of your own fan base. Boosie has a fan base. Some niggas just want to be famous just because. But those who know can see there's no substance to their so-called hustle. This cat told me he was a legend on my page the other day. Calls himself Five Mics. I didn't know what the fuck he was legendary for. What did you do? Music, sports. Biggie Small said the streets is the short stop. You either slang crack rock or you got a wicked jump shot. What's your story? Where did you become famous at? You just popped up and you just... You bugging out for real, my nigga. Like, <laughs> you bugging out. Uh, you really bugging out, seriously. And it ain't gonna work. So uh, you gave birth. You you inspired this video. People need to know that 
it don't go like that, fam. And that's why zip with the drip on your ass, because you ain't authentic to hip hop. And remember what I said at the beginning of this video, he went to jail in the early 90s. So he's st he stuck on authentic, real New York, beef and broccoli, Avarex shit. And that outfit, just a bad idea. This is what makes it more terrible. It's niggas in them comments telling them that that shit's fire. Buddy Hill can't fuck with Russell Westbrook. He said, you're not legendary because you've been rapping for a long time. Subscribe to the channel. If this your first time in the live stream, hip hop, sports, and fashion, The Real Gully TV. He trying to, he think people hating on him. Ain't nobody hating on you, nigga. And you ain't got no real friends and shit. A nigga that's, uh, anybody that care about you, that like or respect you would tell you, fam, you need to take that shit off. I wouldn't even shot the video. I, I don't know, man. Listen, I can't pick with, fam, don't wear that, my nigga. Like, take the snow pants off. Like, you can wear the jacket. Take them pants off, my nigga. Like, that, somebody should have, he one of the mannequin niggas. I told y'all that yesterday. He bought shit straight off the mannequin. Anyway, I appreciate y'all for coming. Yeah, he do. He do. You can tell when somebody is a mannequin shopper and shit. Like, they look like a fucking mannequin and shit. You like that. He must have got that from a ski, the ski shop where they sell parkers and shit like that. <laughs> Marco, and they was booked. I was booked. I was booked for a week. He said Luca, Booker, Tatum is cool. Luca ain't on a um, winning team. They was talking about that. Dallas ain't no good team all like that. The Dallas Mavericks not a good team all like that. People talk about Luca like them niggas be winning, winning games and shit. They just got away. They just got off on Steph Curry and them. They just got away. Very, very good game. They had a shootout. Him and Steph was kind of going back and forth. They wasn't sticking each other. But uh, if Tim Hardaway Jr. didn't play good in that game, didn't hit big threes late in the game and shit like that, Luka didn't have enough firepower to keep them niggas at bay. He couldn't, he couldn't beat all of them by himself. So he, he got a little help. He got away, but they not a good team. The Dallas Mavericks in the same situation as the Lakers, underachieving. He said Dallas not good, won't make it as far as last year. I'm watching them, uh, Mark. I'm watching them. <laughs> Coming soon, Mike Jack, the Shaheen Franklin story. Cavaliers, they fire, man. They're young. He said, Tim Hardaway is a Bronx legend. Tim Hardaway is from, um, Tim Hardaway is from Chicago, fam. I know Zip with the drip off your interview you did earlier this year. Now you see the music video. Enjoy. The Spurs, that's the only team the Lakers can beat right now. Pillmatic, man. Pillmatic, make sure y'all go get that on all streaming platforms. I'm about to get up out of here. Shout out to Big Ooh Trenton. I appreciate the motherfucking video, man. Word up. I appreciate the support, too. Fast break by Big Ooh. Like, share, and comment that joint. Go to my website. Shop. It's the holiday season. Get your dribble right. Health. Fitness, finance, I've been telling y'all for years, we here now, pay attention, peace.